Okay, we're ready to do the Unit 9 review for the Math 4 course. A little humor at the front. Now, some of you may have figured out with the Kahoot that I am no longer asking for the typical 68, 95, 99, 7 kind of answers. I'm asking for bits and pieces off of this drawing. And so you'll need to be familiar with all the bits and pieces in addition to the usual three numbers. Number one, uh, I take, you know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to jump to the end for a second because I drew something at the end that I thought might be helpful. And uh, uh, a bit of a flow chart. It suddenly occurred to me that there is method to my madness. And, uh, you know, when you are facing a problem in this particular unit, perhaps the first question you need to ask is, is there a sample? If the answer is no, they didn't do a sample, then you just do the mean and the standard deviation and you run on with the problem. And there's no special formulas. But if there is a sample that's involved, then your next question is, are there means plural? Uh, you know, did they do more than one mean? Uh, the answer is yes, then you do the formula on the left. And the answer is no, you do the one on the right. And uh, getting a hold of this flowchart might actually help you navigate your way through this unit. So let's see how that goes. So we are here. And when I see, you know, they have mean of 73, standard deviation of 8. What percentage of cars averaged at least 78? I don't see anything there about a sample. And so we just went into uh, Desmos and did 73 and 8, and then did 78 miles per hour and up. And we got uh, 26598. I think I probably would have written that in the test to look like this. That 8 is going to bump the 9. The 9 is going to bump the 5. When the nine bumps to a zero, the five is going to bump to a six. And uh, I would recommend doing four decimal places on your probabilities. Now, you know, if you want to say 26.60%, uh, I'm not going to count that off. There, they're the same thing. All right. Um, same parameters, but this time, what percentage of cars averaged between 70 and 75? Again, Desmos can give us the answer on that nice, nicely. And so we would say that the probability was 2, 4, 4, 9. The 7 bumps the 8 up. But here we're going to have to do some calculating. Is that uh, Acme batteries, guaranteed replacement batteries, didn't have at least 425 charges. If they sold 10 batteries, how many can they expect to replace? There's no mention of a sample here. So we're just doing the 500 charges in their lifetime, standard deviation of 40. And we're looking at those that had 425 or less. And that would be roughly 3%. Now, if they sold 10,000 batteries and they want to know how many can they expect to replace, then what you're going to do is you're going to say 10,000 times 0 0.0303. Now, here's the deal. 10,000 has five decimal places to it. And so I'm going to go at least five and maybe a couple of more just to make sure that when the rounding error finally happens, it is so far down the line that I'm not going to notice it. It's not going to affect my answer. It's not going to create drift. So when I punch this in the calculator, I say 10,000 times 0 0.0303 equals, I get 303.96. I might as well say 304. So you have about 304 batteries that you can expect to replace 
out of the 10,000 that were produced. Okay, now this is a similar problem. The parameters are the same, but they've changed uh, the question. Uh, and this time they're talking instead of 425 and below, now they want 600 and up. They got a prize for everybody who's, who charges more than 600 times. So we're gonna take the same kind of idea, take the 10,000 batteries, because they sold 10,000 of them too, and multiply it by the decimal and I'm going to go past five. And see what we come up with. 10,000 times 0 0.00620966565. And I get 62.09, yada, yada. So I might as well call it 62. And these were prizes. Don't know what the prize is. I, I'm usually during class made some sort of commentary about how uh, back in the day timeshares would try and get you to a, a sales spiel by offering you one of three prizes that you have already won. One of these three. It's either a week's vacation in any of their properties or a $500 gift card or a $5 Walmart card. And of course, you know, everybody that walked in there got a $5 Walmart card. Uh, I don't know if they ever intended to award the other prizes. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't, but we never saw it. Uh, so prizes can be a very nebulous thing. Now this, I kind of snuck in there. I did not number it. So some of you may have actually walked past it and not realized that I was asking for something, but I was asking for the formula for the z-score. And the thing is that you've actually got three formulas on this test that you are going to be using greatly. Um, the, these and then the two standard deviations, one and nine C for sample means and um, uh, one and nine D for sample proportions. All right, we are finding a z-score here, which means we're gonna do that. And the X is Cadbert's measurement and the mean and the standard deviation. By the time we simplify this down, that could be eight over five, which is 1.6. And that is his z-score. Now I'm gonna point this out. Um, at some point you may be asked about the units. What kind of units is 1.6? Well, you stop and think about it. These seem to be either above or below the mean in terms of standard deviations. That's the units, is the standard deviations. You'll need to know that. Now, here we're asking it from the other point of view. You have the z-score. What was the raw score? And the standard deviation, 2.5. This time, you're going to have to use a little old-fashioned algebra. Multiply both sides by 2.5 so that this fraction will go away. And this actually turns out to be negative 4. Watch your signs there. Uh, this will mess up your problem if you forget that that's a negative 4. And when you add 55 to it, you get a 51 for a raw score. All right, Egbert entered a pumpkin at the North Carolina State Fair, 122 pounds. They want to find the z-score. So his 122 minus the mean of 150 and the standard deviation of 20. That means he has negative 28 on top, which settles down to a negative 1.4. Just for the record, uh, speaking of records, uh, record pumpkins usually wind up closer to a thousand pounds, um, at least in the several hundreds uh, when they, they uh, uh, get to record proportions. Although I still have no idea how you get a thousand pound pumpkin off the ground 
transport it and get her all the way to the state fair to be judged without it breaking apart. I, 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 I don't see that happening, but anyway. All right, this time they give you the z-score and they ask you for the raw score. And so we don't know the raw score. We know the mean is 150. We know the standard deviation is 20. And when we go back and we multiply both sides by 20, of course, these guys cancel out. I'm left with that on the right. 20 times that gives me 70. And yeah, when I add 150 to get X by itself, I wind up with 220 pounds. I'm a big heifer. It weighs more than some of y'all do. All right. Now, parameter versus statistic. Remember, parameter is uh, a proportion that is with the population, and statistic is a proportion that is about a sample. And so, U.S. News and World Report published results of a poll. That's a sample. Any kind of poll like that is a sample. And so that makes this a statistic, okay? According to the U.S. Census, um, that right there is a clue that the census gets everybody, at least by definition. Uh, and so this is about the population. So this would be a parameter. And then here, out of people ordering glittery pizza, 48% put pineapple or pizza, according to a recent sample. That makes that a statistic. Yeah, really half the battle with this unit is watching for the key words and phrases that signal which way you're supposed to go in different situations. All right, mean weight for the human baby, 7.5, standard deviation, 1.2. Babies, that's ain't going to happen. Hospital. Um, measured babies born in the past month, calculating the mean for each day. The mean for each day, that means there were means plural. Ah, remember that flow chart? Which means that we are going to go after this formula. So the mean was 1.2, excuse me, a standard deviation was 1.2, and square root of 100 babies, which the square root of 100 is 10, which makes this move the decimal over 1.12. Okay. I'm going to pause here long enough to uh, give you the same warning that I did in class, that um, most of these that involve calculation like this, I am not going to make them multiple choice, uh, because sometimes I feel like you don't know which formula to choose on this, and so you grab one, and you work it out, and you look at the four answers, and oh, they all are nowhere close to this. Maybe I should choose the other one. And so... Um, uh, most of the calculation uh, questions on the test are going to be open-ended, all right? I'm not going to give you any clues as to which way you should go with this. You're just going to have to know, uh, and maybe that flow chart will help. All right. Sample of 144 babies born at Mercy Me Hospital. Uh, please notice that that's a different number. That's not the 100 that was in the last question which means that we have to calculate all over again. The well, square root of 144 is 12, which that's going to wind up being 0.1, which goes right there. And we're talking about probability that the mean weight of those babies would be over 8.8 .8 pounds. Um, that's an ugly number. Now, I'm not going to give you anything on the test that is going to uh, create something like this in scientific notation. You're not going to get that E negative 7 on your calculator. 
um, just for the record, what this would look like as a decimal is if it's 10 to the negative 7, that means that there are six zeros, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then the 2. Those are the seven decimal places. And then you've got the 8, 6, 6, 5, and so on. Um, tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, ten millions. That's like three out of ten million. If you were to take 10 million samples of 144 babies at a time, only three of them would come out where the baby, the mean of the babies was over eight pounds. Uh, that's what they're trying to say here. But uh, like I said, I'm not going to you know, do anything that ridiculous as a decimal. You might have three or four zeros along the way, but uh, not six. Not, not such that you get a uh, scientific notation out of it. All right, let's change gears. New, new problem. 44% own an iPhone with a standard deviation of 3%. If you took a sample, all right, we've got a sample here, and asked who owns an iPhone, the standard deviation for this group. Sounds like one sample. Sounds like one sample. So this is going to be one of those where the standard deviation um, is going to look like this, where you're going to have square root of 0.44 times 0.56 over 400. And a calculator says you're going to wind up with 0 0.248. Typically, you're going to see me go to four decimals and call it a day as much as possible. You know, unless it, it just you know cuts off like 0.5 and that's it. Um, and that's fine. But if you've got this big, long, ugly decimal, most of the time, I'm going to let you route it to four places unless those four places are all zeros. And then you might want to carry a couple of extra just to give it some kind of, you know, go to a significant digit somewhere. All right. Um, that's what that's going to look like. And then we're going to take that number and we're going to put it into, and actually I, I just carried all the decimals I saw in my calculator and stuck it in there. And uh, what is the probability that at least 42% of them own an iPhone? 42 and up. And that would be and again, I'm okay if you leave it as a decimal form like that. Or if you want to say 78.98%, I'm okay with that too. I consider them moral equivalents. All right. Department of Ag, daily samples of gas prices from 1,000 gas stations. Um, if the means of those samples, hmm, that sounds like more than one mean. So we're going to be using this formula. We're going to say 0.15 over the square root of the thousand. And we're going to get 0 0.0047 as a standard deviation. And just like last time, I carried more than just the four decimals. You know, since I had it in front of me in my calculator, I just punched it into Desmos just to give me a more accurate answer. And an interesting thing happened is that uh, when I punched in, you know, two, 250 a gallon and up, I got one. Well, basically what that's telling you is your probability is 100%. Now, why did that happen? Well, remember we talked about how with standard deviation, the smaller the number, and I mean 0 .0047 is a really small number. The smaller the number, the more the standard deviation, the more the sides of the bell curve came in toward the middle. 
you know, it's kind of like it's, it's squashing it in the middle and it's forcing it up. It became taller and skinnier uh, when the standard deviation gets smaller like that. And so we have a very tall, skinny bell curve here, but notice where it comes crashing down. You really, you've got a point right there at about 2.57, at a point right there at about 2.63. And almost 100% of your bell curve is gonna fall between those two numbers. Now, when I said $2.50 and up, well, the whole thing is, is involved in that. That's why we got our 100%, is because really anything outside of these boundaries uh, is not going, it, it is not a likely mean price on whatever sample we take that day. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? No. <laughs> you know, when, when your probability, what was it we were looking at earlier? Three out of 10 million. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? <laughs> not in this lifetime. Um, you know, I guess it's kind of like having one of those hundred year floods like we had a few years back here in North Carolina that uh, the flood stages were so high that, uh, you know, we weren't going to see anything like that for a hundred years. Um, you know, that's probability for you. Is it likely? No. Is it possible? Uh, actually, yes. All right. And then uh, I will close out with a shot of this um, flow chart again. And uh, we're going to call it that for the review sheet for unit nine. And uh, the test is up next.